In this video I'm going to talk about resonance in electrical circuits. And with resonance I mean the oscillation of energy between a capacitor and an inductive element. At some frequency an LC circuit uh, can continue to oscillate for a time even after the stimulus is removed. And that's, that's what I'm going to cover here. Here I've drawn two similar but, but distinct circuits. There's a parallel resonance circuit here and a series resonance circuit here. By series resonant I mean we have the capacitor in series with the inductor, L. And by parallel resonant I mean that we have the capacitance in parallel with L. And I'm going to walk through this example, but what we're going to see is that at some frequency this circuit becomes resonant. And for the parallel resonant uh, case, what's going to happen is that the total impedance of this tank, this whole unit here, at some frequency it's going to become basically infinite, where at all other frequencies it will be, uh, it will pass the, the signal through it. And the exact opposite case will happen in the series resonance circuit. At some frequency, this uh, circuit will pass energy from V1 to V2, terminal 1 to terminal 2, where at all other frequencies, it's going to effectively stop it. It's going to be a very high impedance. So let's walk through the example. I've written here and here the expressions for V2, voltage 2, here as a function of voltage 1. Here's voltage 1, here's voltage 2. For the parallel resonant case, V2 equals V1, and we just have a voltage divider here, so it's going to be R, the load in the numerator, over ZC, the, the impedance of the capacitor, in parallel with the impedance of the inductor, plus R. And you can just walk through and convince yourself that case. And just as a reminder up here, the, the impedance of a capacitor is equal to 1 over j omega c, where omega is 2 pi times the frequency, and the impedance of an inductor is j omega l. <clears throat> Here in the series resonant case, we have a very similar example, uh, where we have v2 equals v1 times r, this r, here's the l, um, over the uh, voltage divide uh, over the, the sum of the, these impedances, ZC plus ZL plus ZR. At this point I'm going to speed up and do some of the math, uh, pause and draw and come back. Here I've just written out the expression for ZC in parallel with ZL. Now I've introduced the J omega C and the J omega L terms. You can pause and convince yourself this is correct. Let's scroll down and simplify a little more. And here for this term here, I've multiplied both the numerator and denominator by j omega c to make this new expression here. I'm running out of room, so I'll scroll down a little bit. And then finally, uh, simplify it a little more to the, the main thing I want here is I've got a 1 minus omega squared LC term here for the parallel resonance circuit and the same term over here for the series resonance circuit. Now what happens, and let me, let me write it up here, what happens when omega squared LC equals 1? Well, over here uh, for the parallel resonance circuit, that means in this denom denominator of this local expression we're going to have a 0. So it's going to be 1 minus 1, uh, so j omega l divided by 1 minus 1, j omega l divided by 0 is going to be infinity, and so infinity plus r is still infinity, and r divided by v1 times r divided by infinity is equal to 0. It's going to be 0. v2 is going to be 0 at resonance, at this condition. And for this expression over here, when 1 minus 1 is plus r, when that's the case, we have this expression goes to 0, and we have r over r, which is 1, and so it's left with v1. So v2 equals v1 for the series resonant case, uh, seri series resonant circuit at resonant frequency. And by resonance, I mean that omega 
is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of LC. It's just rewriting that expression. With this in our pocket, let's scroll back up and talk a bit about it. Let me change colors. So for the parallel resonant case, and I'm talking about the case for when either circuit, when you have omega equals uh, 1 over LC, the square root of that, for this case, this, this tank is going to go to uh, infinite impedance. So at, when, when that's the case, then this Z tank equals infinity, and V1 can't communicate with V2 because there's infinite impedance between them, and V2 will go to zero because over here it's going to see an infinite impedance, and over here it sees a finite impedance, and so it drifts down to this potential. For the series resonant case, the exact opposite will occur at all frequencies other than resonant frequency. It will pass, it won't, will not pass energy through from V1 to V2. It looks like an infinite impedance, but at this resonant frequency, these two elements, it looks like a short circuit, and V1 will equal V2. Why have I uh, discussed this issue in the, in the context of a, of a printed circuit board design? printed circuit board design video series. Well, let's consider this, this series resonant circuit in the context of what a capacitor actually looks like. And I'm going to scroll down and draw some, some, some things about. Well, a capacitor is actually a series resonant circuit. This is what you would normally think of as a capacitor. It's the, the ideal capacitor. But in fact, when you introduce a capacitor into your circuit, let's say a surface mount component, you're going to have a, non, a very non-ideal situation. You're going to have a, well, here's the capacitor. That's C. That's the same as this C. Uh, in parallel with that capacitor, there's going to be some resistance. Uh, let, let's ignore that for now. Let's assume it's infinite. There's going to be the uh, equivalent series inductance, which is a function of the package shape that you're using. There's going to be an equivalent series resistance, which is also a function of the package shape. And then there's going to be an inductance from the traces leading up to your capacitor. Let's simplify that and say we're only concerned about this, this, and this. For the aspect I want to discuss, that's a fine assumption. And so we're lumping all of those inductances together to be one L there and one C there. What do we have? We have a series resonant circuit. And let's assume that the inductance is actually quite low. So at low frequency, I, I've got a plot here. So we've got log of the impedance, the total impedance through there on the y-axis and the log of frequency on the x-axis. And here I've drawn the resonant frequency where omega equals one over the square root of LC. Okay, so what does this look like coming into the resonant frequency? Well, it's going to behave like you would expect a capacitor would behave. Its impedance is going to go down as the frequency increases. It uh, passes higher and higher frequencies. But then let's say we get to the resonant frequency. Well, what happens at the resonant frequency? The impedance drops to basically zero. It's not going to actually drop to zero in, in a real case, but it's, it's basically dropping to zero. So we see a there's the trough. That's as low as we're going to go. But then something interesting happens. Above the resonant frequency, the capacitor is basically opened up. It's, it's passing all frequencies above that, but the inductor um, is not. It's, its impedance is J omega L, and so we're going to see the impedance of the, the capacitor actually start to rise with frequency. And so this is an aspect that we have to pay attention to in especially high frequency printed circuit board design that when we use capacitors we want to make sure that we're using them below their resonant frequency. I'm going to scroll down and make a side note about resonance. Let's say we have this series resonant circuit here with it. there's an R in here as well and so we have an AC voltage and a current and the I equals V divided by Z total where Z total is the sum of this, this, and this, the impedance, this is Z, C, and this is Z, L. What is the current going to look like as a function of frequency? Well, let's start by drawing an omega naught term there. That's going to be the center frequency, and I'm going to call omega naught, is, that's the resonant frequency, 1 over LC. 
and the current is going to have a Gaussian shape sort of kind of around that point. And let's say for the case of a small resistance, it may look like this. And then for a large resistance, maybe it kind of looks like this. And what's going on here? Well, let's let's make a definition. Let's say the full width of hat max, that's going to be that. And that's going to be drawing it down here. Let's call that delta W, the spread. We can define a quality factor of the circuit, the resonance, as Q equals omega naught over the delta, that full width to half max. And we can say that's L omega naught over R, where L over R is this, this expression here. And so we simplify more. We have 1 over R uh, times LC, L over C. You can work through the algebra and convince yourself that's the case. But for a given L and a given C, the R is going to determine the quality factor, the spread, that, that full width half max.